Hey guys, welcome back to Disrupt It Yourself. I'm Andrew, and this is the Dremel Digilab 3D45. Now, I've reviewed a Dremel 3D printer before. If you look a little bit farther down on my YouTube channel, you'll see I actually reviewed the Dremel 3D40. I've talked about this a little bit on Instagram and on a previous video, but when I set out to review the 3D40, I actually had fairly low expectations, especially as it's a 3D printer with proprietary filament. But because I gave it a chance, I was surprised that the 3D40 cranked out some pretty awesome PLA prints. Now, this has been at least a year now, I got my hands on the 3D45 thanks to Dremel and I really appreciate them giving me a chance uh, to be one of their testers and do this ambassador program thing. It's been a great experience, so shout out to them. Uh, but this machine now it has a heated bed, which wasn't on the previous machine. There are some minor uh, software improvements, but in a lot of ways it's similar. User experience is pretty similar as far as it has um, a touch screen that works really well. It's not capacitive, but it works super well. It's very responsive. The menus are pretty well thought out. Interacting with the machine is great. And the extruder also, along with the heated bed, can handle higher temperature materials, which for me was most intriguing because I found the 3D40 to be a great printer for really precise uh, PLA prints without too much fuss. It was just kind of like set it up, print it, and they turned out awesome. And then I thought, wow, if this machine can really handle ABS, and it actually does nylon as well, then that would make this printer super valuable on the market, I think, because there just aren't too many 3D printers in this price range. And by the way, it's $17.99, so it's not the cheapest printer on the market, but it's also not the most expensive or one of the more expensive ones. There aren't too many in that price range that can really handle ABS prints really well or other high temperature materials because they aren't enclosed. Even some really awesome 3D printers, and I've used a couple of them, just aren't great with ABS, especially if you're printing something really big and tall, like this Darth Vader model that I printed. Now, because this machine has um, kind of a little lid on the top, as you can see here, and a nice lid for the front, a cover, when you're printing, and you actually notice when you're printing ABS or nylon because the bed heats up, if you open it up here, you really feel the temperature that gets pretty well enclosed in there. When the 3D printer is opened up while you're printing, it'll actually tell you if something is open. If the top or the, or the front is open, the software actually notices that and it tells you, hey, the door's open. And that's not just to remind you, that's because you're trying to keep that temperature inside. And what that turns into is awesome high temperature material prints. Um, I'm not saying you couldn't get this kind of result in ABS on another 3D printer. I'm just saying I've had to put a lot more work into getting an ABS print anywhere near this quality on 3D printers that are just as expensive or some even more expensive. So I think that's pretty awesome, super valuable for me and maybe for other makers that have other printers that are maybe even more maker friendly because they're a little more open source, then it's great because this will be your go-to machine maybe for high temperature material prints that just don't turn out so good on your more maker rep wrap type machine. In addition to that, one thing that makes this 3D printer really awesome for me is now they have compatibility with more maker-friendly software. You actually have a special version of Cura, like a lot of people have done, and I'm not the world's biggest Cura fan, but it works. Um, it's a lot better than what I was used to using on the 3D40, a little more familiar, um, and they do say there's Simplify 3D support. I won't get into that in this review because I've been having some issues with it, but I'm working with the Dremel team. Since I'm probably the first customer with this machine that's trying to use Simplify 3D with it. There aren't too many people in the wild with this machine, and I think I'm a small subset that actually already has Simplify 3D. I'm not giving them too much of a hard time, but I am waiting to get Simplify 3D, and then maybe I'll make a quick video to show you how well that works. I've done prints at 50 microns. They look incredible. I've had this machine for almost a month, just a few days short of a month, and in that time I've had it running almost constantly. And this is probably one of my bigger prints that I've done. I've done a few smaller ones, a few good tall prints. So let me show you a couple.
Dremel is killing it. The machine has a 10 by 6 by 6.7 inch build volume, which isn't enormous. It's definitely not leading the charge in big build volume. I have other machines that do that. But it's a usable size. I'm glad we've got at least 10 inches in one direction so your longer parts can fit in there. Um, it, it definitely does the trick there. It's not too small. It's not one of those machines where after a little while you're going to be so angry that you don't have a little bit more build volume. It's a usable size. Um, I believe it's about the same size as their previous one. I, I think it's the same actually as the 3D40, so you don't get a big size increase. Um, but now we can do nylon, eco ABS, of course PLA, and there's some rumors of some kind of polycarbonate in the works, but we'll hold off on that. The bed is removable, I'll show you that. Just has these little tabs that you grab and pop off. And it's a little glass plate with a frame around it which makes it really easy to lock in place on top of the heated bed. Works really well. Um, the user interface is great, as I was mentioning before. Um, everything you need is in the menus. It's really easy to get to everything. I'm really happy with that experience. Bed leveling is semi-automated. If you want to see a little bit more about that, it's exactly the same as it was on the previous Dremel 3D printer. It, the extruder just has a little swing down um, switch and it probes in three positions and you have two knobs to turn. To me it wasn't quite perfect. Sometimes it tells you it's level and I think it could be just a tiny bit more level. So I recommend leveling twice maybe the very first time just to make sure you have things just right. And if you start to experience problems, one important thing to remember is that if you go into the machine settings and go to calibrate, they have a nozzle gap calibration, which is basically an offset from the bed to the nozzle. I recommend doing that. Uh, because you might get a perfect level, but that doesn't mean the offset is perfect. So keep an eye on that. It's not something that's mentioned too much. And then you really kind of have three different ways to uh, print on this machine, which is one thing that I like and don't like. I like it because it means you have different options for different people, you know, the different strokes for different folks. Uh, the only problem is the experience is a little bit different depending on how you do it. One cool feature about this machine is if you do it one way, you can print from the cloud which is nice, and you can even use their cloud slicer. You can always monitor it, but if you're printing it that way, it'll actually do a time lapse, and when the print is complete, it'll send you an email, and you get a little time lapse. It does the trick. You get to see the print progress. It's kind of cool. I like to share them on social media. The only problem is if you start to print here, if you get right in front of the machine, use a flash drive or whatever, then it doesn't really work. You, you can still monitor online. You can look at the print, but you won't be able to pause it or stop it. And the other caveat is you won't get that time lapse. It only does that when you're using the cloud. That's not super important to me, to be honest, having some of those cloud features. You can always upload your G-code, slice it yourself, and then upload it from the cloud and start it that way if you really want to get the time lapse. That's not so bad. I'm still pretty old fashioned. Nine times out of 10, I just prefer to put it on a flash drive and come to the printer. And it's nice to be able to log in and uh, watch the print progress and make sure that everything's okay if I step away or go to the store or whatever. So long story short, I'm sure there's a lot of other things I could go through. And if you have any questions, please do me a favor and let me know. But my experience so far has been really good with the Dremel. Uh, I just wanted to get a first review out there so that I can give you guys my opinions about it, go over the most important stuff. I'd be happy to go into more detail. We can talk about software. We can talk about specific features. We can do some really hard hitting tests. I'm going to do a second video that we're going to go through some calibration prints and we're going to go into kind of that nitty gritty of, okay, can it really handle overhangs? I think the extruder is really good. Um, it cools really well, so I think it'll do really well on some of those tests. Uh, but my kind of UX focused review, which is what I focus on the most, has been really positive. I love this 3D printer and I'm excited to see what else it can do. 
and spend some more time with it. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and let me know. And we'll keep on keeping on with the Dremel DigiLab 3D45. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Keep on making awesome stuff, and I'll catch you later.